Previously, Haruto, who had a rough time in junior high. The bullying he faced had a lasting impact on him, leading him to become a shut-in. This pattern continued into his adult life, and he lost hope for his future, living aimlessly without any purpose. One fateful day, while lying in bed and watching anime on his phone, something extraordinary happened. A strange light emanated from the device, and before he knew it, he was transported to a different dimension. There, he was greeted by a goddess who congratulated him and informed him that he had been chosen for reincarnation. To help him in his new life, she granted him overpowered skills and advised him to make the most of this opportunity. Concealed within his chamber, Haruto is left confused as to why his father no longer pays him regular visits. He assumes that his father must be preoccupied with some other matter, a notion he's quite alright with, as it excuses him from his vigorous swordsmanship drills. Suddenly, his ears catch a commotion outside. A maid, frantic and flustered, is searching for dressings and antiseptics to treat the wounded. Intrigued and worried, Haruto activates his enchanted monitoring system. What he discovers sends a jolt of surprise through him. The castle's soldiers have returned from battle, their bodies damaged and broken. The support staff is doing everything they can, but it's not enough. Feeling a heavy weight in his chest, Haruto seeks his father, finding him in quiet isolation. Gold explains that a recent surge in bandit attacks has plagued the province. He had managed to get intel on the thieves' base, planning to eradicate them once and for all. Despite thorough preparations, his men were caught off guard, ambushed by the bandits. Haruto's father's hand tightens into a fist as the weight of the failure sinks in. It has not only wounded his men, but also their morale. Thinking this seemed too grim for Haruto's young eyes, he suggests the boy return to his room. Haruto remains silent and steps back, while his mind is filled with countless thoughts. As he leaves, Haruto stumbles upon Flay, giggling and making light of the royal soldier's defeat. He sees her childish glee as disrespectful, losing his temper and telling her to seal her lips. As they part ways, Haruto stealthily employs his healing magic, mending the injured soldier's bodies to everyone's amazement, including his father's. Retiring for the night, Haruto wakes to find Flay devotedly standing outside his room, silent. He asks her if she's been there all night, to which she doesn't reply. Realizing that she's only obeying his previous order, he grants her permission to speak, expressing his regret for his previous outburst. Flay, misinterpreting his actions, feels guilty and apologizes. Haruto brushes the incident off and guides Flay to the castle rooftop. There, he unveils his magical surveillance of the province, expressing his intention to find the bandits who attacked his father and the soldiers, and bring them to justice. With Flay's assistance, they discover a gang of bandits partying deep within the forest, in the company of some strangely familiar faces dressed in soldiers' attire. Putting two and two together, they realize that the bandits must have had a tip-off from inside the castle. Taking matters into their own hands, Haruto and Flay employ their flight magic and head for the forest. Watching them from a window, Haruto's younger sister is left pondering the true nature of her brother. Meanwhile, in the forest, the bandits reveal that the soldier's captain is a mole, plotting against Haruto's father. Just in time to hear the revelation, Haruto casts an immobilizing spell on their enemies. They learn that these soldiers belonged to the neighboring empire and had been spreading chaos within their kingdom in the guise of bandits. The pair can't fathom how these enemies managed to cross the heavily guarded border, only to discover that an accomplice had assisted their intrusion. Seeing this as a direct threat to his father's life, Haruto expresses an artificial sense of gratitude to the spies but does not intend to show them mercy. He orders Flay to set the fort ablaze as a punishment for their ambush, leaving no evidence of their visit. They depart quietly, Hart planning to inform his father anonymously about the day's events. The following day, an anonymous letter enlightens Haruto's father about the spy infiltration and the bandit's eradication. The elder man, having suspected something wrong after the ambush, is not surprised, but troubled. 
He instructs his advisor to extract more information from the spies, preparing for the worst. His daughter, Charlotte, suspects the involvement of Haruto and Flay, decides to approach Flay for answers, having in feeling that she might know more. Finding Flay in a direct manner, she questions if there could be two of Haruto, as she'd spotted him soaring with Flay. Based on her knowledge, Haruto shouldn't have the mana required to take flight. Hence, she decided to visit his quarters to inspect and discovered him in deep slumber, like a baby. Charlotte shares that she didn't detect the usual ominous aura radiating from the slumbering Haruto, leading her to think he might be a lookalike. Flay is surprised by the young girl's sharp observation and confirms Haruto possesses an extraordinary power beyond human limitations. Charlotte praises the extraordinary nature of her dear Haruto, yet she avoids explaining the existence of the two Harutos. As a matter of fact, the Haruto that Charlotte spotted in the room was merely a magical illusion. Changing her line of questioning, Charlotte asks Flay about Haruto's true identity. Dodging the question, Flay advises Charlotte not to fuss over petty matters and advises her to focus on her own affairs if she wishes to grow up like her. Flay later lets Haruto know that Charlotte has discovered his secret outing the previous night and his magical replica. This naturally makes Charlotte suspicious of Haruto. As a result, Haruto decides to increase surveillance on Charlotte to monitor her actions, ensuring she doesn't uncover his antics once again. Later that night, Haruto leaves his room for a bathroom break, and Charlotte discreetly follows him. Noticing her tail, Haruto confronts Charlotte. However, as she spins around, Charlotte quickly makes a run for it. Later, when Haruto decides to indulge in a long, rejuvenating bath, Charlotte stealthily follows him there as well. She continues her covert operations, observing her brother while he's engaged in training, studying, chatting with Flay, and even during his bath. However, Haruto masterfully behaves like an ordinary child to keep her suspicions at bay. Following a week of surveillance by Charlotte, things begin to normalize. Haruto's mother, Natalia, decides to take Charlotte on a journey with her to attend the upcoming annual festival. Gold tells Haruto that he usually accompanies Natalia on such trips, but this year, Natalia has invited Charlotte. Haruto suggests that Natalia bring Flay along, but Natalia insists that Flay is needed for errands for Haruto. Haruto recalls that he tasked Flay with deterring the monsters in the region from attacking the nearby towns and villages. One night, Haruto's surveillance alarm, set to monitor Charlotte, wakes him up, and he senses something amiss. It seems Empire soldiers have trapped Natalia and Charlotte midway through their journey, and their own soldiers are struggling to fend them off. Natalia attempts to flee while holding Charlotte but the Empire soldiers use their magic to apprehend them, injuring Natalia's leg. Haruto's magical spell takes control of Charlotte, guiding Natalia to escape. They rush towards a towering cliff and, with Natalia's magic, manage to descend with minimal harm. Charlotte informs Natalia about a nearby hiding place. They discover a stunning, brightly lit cave. Suspecting another's assistance in providing directions, Natalia decides to find the mystery helper, who she believes is a hero of justice. Natalia instructs Charlotte to stay inside the cave and steps outside, only to find the cave's entrance magically sealed off with illusions. The Empire soldiers coincidentally find Natalia. In a desperate act to avoid torture, Natalia attempts to end her own life with a dagger. Haruto arrives just in time to rescue her, knocking her unconscious so she won't witness his next actions. Haruto, filled with rage, defeats all the Empire soldiers in a matter of seconds. Afterwards, he carries Natalia back into the cave and camouflages his presence to remain unseen by Charlotte. He alters his voice and instructs Charlotte to care for her unconscious mother until help arrives. Charlotte recognizes the malevolent aura surrounding Haruto and wonders why he, an apparent villain, rescued them. She challenges Haruto, questioning if he is indeed a hero of justice. The question stuns Haruto, but he plays along, repeatedly agreeing. With her childlike understanding, Charlotte concludes that Haruto's powers are meant to combat evil. 
She steps closer to Haruto to apologize for her prior misconceptions. Haruto urges Charlotte to keep his hero persona a secret. Charlotte agrees, even promising to deceive her own father to keep Haruto's secret safe. Haruto excuses himself, claiming hero duties, but his true intention is to return to the castle before raising any suspicions. Meanwhile, at the castle, Gold is informed by his advisor about an anonymous letter concerning Natalia and Charlotte. According to the letter, both his wife and daughter are safe, escorted by Flay. Though many of Natalia's bodyguards were injured, they have all fully recovered. Gold breathes a sigh of relief and asks Haruto his thoughts on their anonymous helper. Haruto believes they are justice-seeking heroes and assures Gold that these heroes will handle the Empire soldiers if necessary. However, this ends up being Haruto's significant mistake, as the letter did not specify whether the attackers were Empire soldiers. But before Gold can connect the dots, Haruto quickly diverts suspicion with an excuse. When Charlotte and Natalia finally return home, after warmly embracing Gold, Charlotte moves to hug her brother, something she's never done before. Bringing this episode to a close. Feel free to comment if you're interested in following more of this exciting series. Thanks for your time, if you stayed until the end please like and subscribe for more anime recaps.